What is up, comic fans? Welcome to the channel. I'm Mark, and today I've got part four of the Migrated Comic Collection video series. If you want to see what books are highlighted, their value, and how you can enter to win this Nathan Zerdy Catwoman number 47, don't go anywhere. Check this out. <music> Huge shout out to the homies at Big Time Collectibles. Check out their website, follow them on social media. Don't miss out on the awesome stuff they got going on. And if you need to find a way to get your books cleaned and pressed before you send them off to get graded, hit up my friend Justin over on Instagram. The link is in the description to all my videos. And a huge shout out to the LCS, ABX, Comics and Games. If you're looking to get into comics or tabletop gaming, be sure to check out the link to ABX down below as well fantastic people i stand by all these people that i shout out on my video so let's get right into it again this is part four of this so if you've missed any of the other videos be sure to check them out and stick around toward the end i'll go over how to enter to win that catwoman nathan zerdy cgc 9.8 slab so diving right in i've been pulling these at random i kind of just grab them off the top if it looks like it slants one way too heavy i'd kind of reach to the next one but this one's pretty much turned out to be nearly an entire cbcs I did not realize I had this many CBCS, but I do not discriminate against the grading companies. I pretty much uh, stick with CGC or CBCS. Uh, I, I've, I've seen in previous ones, there are PGX in mine, as well as some of those slab it yourself ones. But kicking it off, I'm very excited to show off this one. This is from 1966, Pete Morrissey story, cover art, and uh, Ernie back. Ernie back art. There's a lot of people and creators that I do not know by name that came from Charlton Comics. For those that don't know, Charlton Comics and Thunderbolt number one right here are the characters that influenced Watchmen. So much so that they are direct uh, copies of these characters just redrawn and renamed for uh, DC purposes after DC acquired them. So Thunderbolt here is actually who you might recognize from Watchmen the movie or the comic as Ozymandias. Inside the pages of this, it also features appearance by Blue Beetle, Son of Vulcan, and Captain Adam. This issue right here is the origin and first appearance of Thunderbolt, as well as the first appearance of the Hooded One. So if you're not familiar with Charlton Comics, I cannot tell you how interesting their history is, how fascinating it is, and how big of a deal it is for actual comic book history as a whole. I did an entire spotlight video on them and uh, how they influenced Watchmen and Alan Moore's take on the characters and everything. Be sure to go back to the channel and find that. It's definitely worth your time, I promise. Next up, going to the completely different end, to a modern retailer exclusive. This is Mighty Morphin issue number one from November of 2020, and this is a John Jang horizontal variant that he did back when Power Rangers hit their uh, landmark issue and split it into two separate series, Frankie's Comics here had this exclusive, and I bought it from them already graded in a 9.8. Uh, I couldn't find any data on this one because it's a retailer exclusive. Uh, you're pretty much like going to see Jang books in every single one of these videos. I've got so many of them, but I'm a diehard Power Ranger fan, and this was just absolutely gorgeous. Com just ridiculously gorgeous. Had to get that. Uh, oh, man, I forgot. Thunderbolt. The value on this is another one that's ridiculously hard to find. This book just doesn't move very often cover price the the price guide tool that i've been trying to get familiar with so i'm using it for this video series had two grade points listed an 8.0 of this goes for 160 dollars and a 3.5 for 51 dollars. they didn't have any other grades listed so i'd say this is probably about a 70 dollar book couldn't even find the last sold on ebay or nothing for it this one no data couldn't even find it on ebay so i'm i mean the price of this at the time of purchase i think was like between 80 and 90 dollars so it's probably around there unless it's become like a scarce one or something frankie's comics in general is scarce if you know you know next up uh man hailing from tour rock week that we just had which was an absolute blast the fantastic event we did on uh instagram i did pick up a copy of tour rock dinosaur hunter issue number one from 1993 david michelini story bart sears and randy elliott cover and art and this is the foil and boss and chrome cover in a CGC 9.8. Now, the sales data on this shows where this book is actually up 2.20%. Tons of sales for this book during that week. And the going rate for a CGC 9.8 is $56. The price on this went down due to the influx of people going and buying them. I had to get me one. Love me some Turok. I've got 
multiple copies. That's actually an entire stack of Turok right there. I got multiple copies. But uh, that's the last one for the CGCs in this video because we're switching over now to CBCS, which some old labels, some new labels, old cases, new cases, and we're kicking it off with another huge win from Turok Week. If you notice, this is issue one, but it is the gold foil edition. This is actually a rare more valuable copy like there's tons of these red ones but these gold ones be sure to keep an eye out for those in the back issue bins this is a cbcs 9.4 i scored it for a best offer of 35 dollars, which brings it in under fair market value of 45 dollars and that was a huge one i love me some turok and i've loved it for a long time and so has my pop because the next one this is probably the most cherished book in my pc this is turok son of stone issue number 35 from 1963. let me see here we have cover by george wilson with that fame like dell comics gold key comics had these amazing painted covers now this had zero graded sales data on it it's just not one you see often a raw copy of this in this grade goes for $25. So add submission prices and all that, you're probably looking at what someone would sell for a $60 to $80 book, depending on what they're uh, paying for submitting. But this was actually the first book that my pops ever got, like when he started collecting back in 1963, when this book is from. So for my last birthday, he actually sent it in. He got this graded, encapsulated, and he gave it to me as a birthday gift. Because I am a second generation collector. Pops is why I got into this hobby. And I thought like that was just absolutely amazing. It was like one of the most like heartfelt gifts I've ever received. And uh, yeah, this will be in my collection to the day I pass it along because I have passed away. Absolutely love that book. Gorgeous cover. Next up, this is one that, uh, man, for people that think that I don't like Marvel, they just don't know. But uh, I absolutely love this book. Love this cover. Love this character. Love this suit that he's rocking. This is from 1984. And I went on a, a kick where I was buying this book often. Like I would buy it and I'd, I gave one to my buddy for a birthday present, all kinds of stuff. And I didn't even realize it was a newsstand when I got it. But it, it is, in fact, a newsstand. And uh, this is a little book with cover and art by Mike Zeck. Story by Jim Shooter. It's probably from Marvel's most recognizable event that they ever did. And this is Marvel Super Heroes Secret War issue number eight. Everyone knows it as the origin of Spider-Man's alien symbiote black costume that later becomes villain uh, venom and it's in a cbcs 8.5 i don't believe that i got this one cleaned or pressed i just sent it in for a straight submission but that's not bad that's like a 231 dollar fmv according to cover price on this one gorgeous book again love it and as a uh, Chris Mahomey would say uh, the fact that it's not signed in a yellow label probably makes it more rare. There's so many of these out there signed. It's just such a book that everyone seems to want in their collection. I understand why. Gorgeous cover, massive battle going on in the back. Just that pose. Just, what did I do? He's doing the Tyler pose right there. What did I do? But uh, yeah, I love this book. Love it's got all the box art on it. I mean, it's just it just screams everything that's right about comics. Like. This is it. Amid the chaos, there comes a costume. Fantastic book. I'm sure a lot of y'all watching this probably have it. Next up, now this is another very personal book. Clayton Crane, the infamous Clayton Crane came to town. And uh, me and the wife decided to go to a signing back in 2000, 2019. And uh, yeah, we went. It was like her first little event like that. It was at a local shop here called Top Dog. We had a blast hanging out in the line beforehand, got some stuff signed. You'll, I guess you'll see other books because this is the first one I came across during the series. And uh, I wanted the crane bow on something, on a book. And I had different books I was getting done. I wanted certain things on this and that. And I wanted the little crane bow on this book. And amid talking to us, because we were getting stuff for Finn as well, he was just kind of blanked out, like enjoying the story about my kid liking the Power Ranger stuff and all that. And he just straight signed this in yellow, which it looks fantastic. But when it clicked that he did it wrong, he remarked it for free just to kind of as an I'm sorry. And he did the little date and little rainbow stuff just to try to make good on it, which was fantastic. It added a story and all that good stuff. But this is Detective Comics issue number 1000 from 2019. It's the first appearance of the Guild of Detection, first appearance of Arkham Knight in continuity and cameo, Joker, Catwoman, Penguin, and Riddler appearances, witness signature of Clayton Crane with sketch on 9-9-2020. So there it is. 
Boom, Detective Comics issue 1000. I absolutely love the way he drew Batman on this. You got the awesome Batman boo back there. Got it signed, and he drew the bat symbol and put the date on it. So that was super dope of him. I sent this in and got it graded uh, through the shop that was there. They weren't offering CGC. They were witnessing CBCS through the shop, and I did that. I went with that option. And it's just a great book, a great story. And the actual last sold on this earlier this month was $202.50 for just a yellow label signed crane copy of this. So with that little that little remark, I know it's not a big remark, nothing, but it is a sketch. I would I would assume that it would give it a little bit more value. But if you're talking big value and a huge surprise, this next book actually blew me away. So uh, this is a book that I got because I love the character. I was excited about what they were doing in comics with the storyline. And this is DC Universe Rebirth. There was a one shot that brought us out of the new 52 and into the rebirth era of DC comics. And this is the fourth printing of it. Each printing had a different cover. And apparently this is the one that holds value. This is the return of Wally West featured on the cover is Wally showing up in front of Batman, but behind him are the three jokers, which had been teased for a while in comics all the way back to the dark side war and eventually did get its story. But the story we got was not what it was originally intended to be kind of thing. Like they're building like this whole like I'm sure like universal thing like every time the universe resets the Joker's in or something like that. But it became just like a follow up to the Killing Joke. But at the time of this, that's not what it was going to be. But this is the first appearance of the three Jokers, right there on the cover of this, and uh, the return of Wally West. This is in his uh, nine point eight. Sent it in, got it graded myself. It's square bound. I did not get it cleaned or pressed. And a cover price nine point eight on this is. $400. $400. $400. I have a hard time wrapping my brain around that. I just got it because I love Kid Flash. Wally West is my favorite Flash. The old three Jokers thing. I mean, just it's a PC book. You know, I just wanted it for myself just to look at, display all that good stuff. $400. <laughs> Mind blown. Next up, this was a Comics Curing Cancer win so we showcase some of the books that we're going to have on the auction for the final auction for comics curing cancer and uh when me rob and dj were setting up for it i, I was talking about like there's two books that are going to show up on this auction that i'm going to go for die hard i don't care what i pay for them it's my contribution to the cause but i'm going to come home with them and i did i landed both of them and this is one of them i was very excited to get it if you follow the channel you know that i'm a huge dc silver bronze age collector i've been snagging up keys for a while get you know shop where the market is not while everyone else is overpaying for marvel stuff i've been just collecting dc keys like it's no one's business and if dc ever makes a turn and hits like the mcu did with the marvel comics i'm going to be rich despite the fact i'll never sell them but this is from 1968 it's issue number 64 of the justice league of america and it's uh, dick dylan and Jack Abel cover story by Gardner Fox. It's the first appearance and origin of the Silver Age Red Tornado. Justice Society of America and T.O. Morrow make an appearance and letters from Marty Pasco and Bob Rosinski. Was that what it says? Rosinskis. Yeah. Boom. The first appearance of the Red Tornado. Now, there was a Golden Age Red Tornado, Ma Kettle, literally an old lady with a pot on her head. This is the first appearance of the Red Tornado that we know and love in comics, the Android. It's pretty much like uh, hangs out at the watchtower, spins around like a tornado, all that cool stuff. But kind of like the vision over in Marvel, he shows up like as a villainous android kind of thing. But that all gets worked out. You know, they figure it out. And there's a beautiful cover featuring the Justice Society of America. You got Our Man, Star Man, Black Canary, Dr. Fate, as well as Jay Garrett Flash. Like fantastic stuff. Very, very cool stuff. And he even has the tornado fist coming down. Wow, very cool. And that's in a CBCS 5.5. Now get this, first appearance of Red Tornado in a 5.5. Definitely a good grade. Look how presentable and gorgeous that is. 60 bucks, $60. Everyone should be looking for that. $60 for a 1968 key comic. Something's not right in the universe here. You know, that's crazy. And the last book, rounding it out with the 10th book, one that's near and dear to my heart for a whole different reason. This, I've not been a graded comic collector for very long, just a few years. I've collected comics, my, I've read comics and loved comics my whole life, collected them uh, for, for as long as I can remember. 
but I was never a slab collector until recent years. And let me see if it tells you when this was actually encapsulated. That would give you an idea. Man, I wish this told you when this was encapsulated. Maybe it did if I scanned the barcode, but I'm not going to waste all that time. So there's certain books because I like to shop local. I like to hunt local and in person. And there was a specific book that I had seen in a shop and it was graded. I'm like, yo, you don't have that not graded? He's like, no. And then I'd seen it come through a handful of time over the years. I'm like, yo, why does that always grade it? Why don't you, why don't you ever get your hands on a raw one? He's like, oh, well, I send it off and grade it myself. I'm like, yo, if one comes in raw, just call me. I'll buy it. I don't I don't want a graded one. And he he's like, yo, if I'm, I'm going to get one, I'm going to get it graded. Da, 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 da. I'm like, all right, whatever. So eventually I just bit the bullet. I bought one. And I'm glad that I did. This is in a CBCS 6.0. And this is the book that opened the door for me for getting comics graded. And like I buy them graded, I submit them myself, all, all of the above. And this really just set it off. This video series would not be happening if it wasn't for the fact that I just had to have this book. And this is from 1968, covered by Maurice Severin, story by Gary Frederick. It's issue number 102, AKA issue number one of The Incredible Hulk. So what this is, is The Incredible Hulk originally only had six issues then his book was ended we wouldn't see the incredible hulk again until issue number 59 of tales to astonish where he shared uh, book space and pages with other featured characters his popularity was so big that from 59 he never left that title it ended with issue number 101 and instead of killing the title starting over they changed the name of tales to astonish to incredible hulk so when tales to astonish 102 happened it was the big premiere issue of The Incredible Hulk, and that became his run. Marvel used to have to share space on newsstands, and they didn't have a lot of space to take up because they would rent it from other companies like DC. That's why you would get these like double feature comics, Tales of Suspense and Tales to Astonish and stuff like that. But because of that, we get some amazing comic book history. And Incredible Hulk 102, the big premiere issue, in a 6.0, goes for about $169.00 ridiculously affordable if you're okay with not being a grade snob and needing a high grade and there's nothing wrong with grade snobbing but this is a gorgeous copy i don't know if it's been cleaned or pressed it definitely doesn't look like it's been pressed i mean over time that stuff can't yeah i, I literally see waves in this yeah let's see if you can see that like there's where do the things go yeah there's literally waves that you can see in there so yeah who cares if you get a gray bump or not? It's perfectly fine just as it is. But that's going to do it for the ones I'm showing off. We've gone plenty of time on this. And if you are interested in a chance to win this CGC 9.8 slab for Catwoman, be sure to leave a comment down below. Let me know who your favorite slab was in this one. And be sure to include the hashtag WeAreLegion at the end of this video series. I will spin a wheel. And it will pick a number, and uh, if it picks number four, I'll come back to this, which is part four, and I'll do a random comment picker. And as long as you let me know what your favorite one in the video was and let that hashtag, you have a chance at winning. Now, if you haven't watched the other videos in the series, go do the same on those videos as well as the ones coming after this. You never know which video will get picked to have the comment pulled from it and the winner drawn. So hit the thumbs up, subscribe to the channel. Thank you for hanging out and watching this long. And until next time, as always, I'm Mark, but we... Our Legion.